This is going to be one of those videos that are more or less off the cuff. No notes before me. Just pulling things up out of my own heart. Things that have stuck with me for over the years have meant a lot and has helped me. And I just wanted to pass them on to you, see if they'll help you. There's a study I got into one time that brought out four distinct personalities and combinations of those personalities. Let me see if I can recall those distinct personalities. The first personality was uh, what they call choleric. Second was a melancholy, phlegmatic, then a sanguine. <clears throat> so, four distinct personalities, which each of us have, which get into various combinations like phlegmatic, uh, choleric, or uh, melancholy, sanguine. You know, different personalities, different characters, each one of us. It's helped me understand people better. I forget the name of the book, if I recall between now and the end of this video, I'll, I'll post it, or I'll post it in the comment area. You can get these books. I mean, it was the lingo and language, not so much the book and the author of the book. It was the Holy Spirit had used these and had me put the books down and then told me, now observe, look at yourself. Well, I discovered that I have a very strong uh, melancholy personality. So you understand it. I try not to go into too many details. A lot of times I go into too many details, I lose people. But I have to explain it because if I don't, you won't even make much sense to you. A melancholy personality. You think of a poet. A poet is a melancholy. They can reach down deep into your soul and touch your emotions and stir you. I mean, they're very... I mean, they just have a way of expressing things to you. They, they bring you to tears. <laughs> you see people, a lot of times, not only poets, but also that uh, record music. Music musicians, I can't say the word. Musicians. They can, you know, music soothes the ravaged breasts. They can reach down there and they can get you laughing or they can get you crying. You know, songs that touch you. So melancholy. A choleric. Very strong, authoritative type of person. This is needed. A leader. Who can take control. There's more to it, but that's just the basic essence of it. Phlegmatic. You know, free for all. I mean, things don't really bother them. They just float through life and seems like what may uh, affect a melancholy and, and that wouldn't affect the, a phlegmatic and they could care whether things are going right or going wrong you know like what a strong collector would say you got to get your act together boy you no know, they would just like oh well what will be will be phlegmatic type of personality then there's the sanguine happy sanguine I mean they're just flirting about life's they always got a permanent perpetual smile on their face I mean they could be in the middle of a storm and could be you know, rejoicing <laughs> happy nothing really seems to ever really bother them a lot of times they, uh, they bother them but they have a way of controlling it their personality controls it so you got these four distinct personalities and like I said, each one of us have a different combination of this personality a balance like sometimes I, I can get very, I'm a very strong melancholy. You see it in my videos and I try to, you know, it sounds like a you know, gloom and doom. Not necessarily gloom and doom, but sometimes I can bring, bring out some very inspirational pieces utilizing music and graphics where I can put sound effects in my background and give it a deeper sense, you know, like an echo and, and, and try to reach you and touch you in the area of your emotions. A flag, I mean, yeah, melancholy. When you are dealing with melancholy, you'll find that they can be easily hurt. I know I can be. Easily hurt. And because they're very creative. 
And if people don't accept their creativity, I mean, it hurts. And what they got usually is something great, good. There should be those who would balance out with other person to help bring these people forward. Because if they come forward and they get rejected, they'll go away. They'll take all their creative talents and skills and abilities and lock it up in themselves and stay secluse and never share it with anyone. It takes all my strength and power to get out here and present these things on the web and to get out there and share it. You'll find that I uh, know Mary uh, Vieta, one of the persons I've communicated to. She and I talk with her friend a lot. She's a melancholy woman. We both have to watch that. Because we could sit there and be, uh, you know, drowning in our own tears. But every now and then, God helps her or me to stand up, to take the lead, to be, to override this melancholy moment, to get us up out of the pit where our moments of sorrow and bring us back to reality, you know, and then become the happy sanguine at time or get to be a partially a phlegmatic in that don't let things bother you as much as they used to be. Don't let the cares and fears of this world weigh you down. To add some of the personalities that we have, the melancholy, for example, and like I said, you, when you're dealing with a melancholy, you're treading, you're like you're walking on eggs. They're very touchy. Now, people say, well, this sounds like a fixed personality. Now, understand, I, I, can, I don't want to say these things to get you, it's called the paralysis of analysis, and that it can make, fix you into a set role. In your personality, as according to the flesh, the world's view, secular view, can, will, will prove to be the fact. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, there's times he can have me be the melancholy that I am. He'll use that. But there are times he can take that melancholy, move it aside, and through the power of my spirit, manifest a strong choleric. Take the lead. Take charge. If it should be needed. And once that need is met, then the back way and become the personality I am, the melancholy. Or help people get past, you know, gloom and doom and have some fun in life. Have some fun in life. Get down and do that. Crack a joke. People said that. Now, sometimes I can be, and I can crack jokes that would get you rolling on the ground. I, I don't know where it comes from. It just comes up out of me, and, I, and it, according to a situation, I can turn it into a joke. Now, there are those that are that phlegmatic type of spirit. There's a serious situation, and they'll make a joke about it. I mean, it's totally uncalled for. But that's their personality. That's where they are. They can't handle it. I have a friend of mine like that. I used to call him the jester, the court jester. You know, he could take a bad situation. We're talking gloom and doom, and trying to get serious about the matter. And he would step in and give all these jokes and make it, make fun of it all, like in the court. Now there's a time for that, because sometimes we can overdo it, overplay it, get too far into gloom and doom. And you need the court jester to come out and try to lighten things up a little bit. And then bring out the dancers, the happy, giddy, uh, sanguine type. We need that. Various gifts and talents and skills between us all. With a balance. One plants, one waters. But it's God utilizing it. Bringing it about the right time. There's time to embrace. Time to frame from embracing. Time to be happy. Time to be sad. Time for war. Time for peace. Time to build up. Time to tear down. And having that right balance. Now, independent from God, it doesn't work. He gets all our proportion, all our balance. But when God, by the power of His Holy Spirit, take hold of a, a body of people, which we call the church or the called out assembly, when you can get that proper balance, with the spirit moving in that environment, everything fits together. They become together, they become one body. The leg don't say to the arm, I don't need you. Every part of that body functions and functions well. You see a lot of these churches, some of them that way, they run well. 
Others are just run by American corporate techniques. I mean, you could take the Holy Spirit out of the scene and it still would run. And we're not talking about churches like that. It's run like a business, you know. I'm not talking about churches like that. You, I, I think you know what I mean. You'll see these churches. on the, Go on the web. Go to the various churches. And you see that they're functioning. Functioning well. And you sense the spirit about the whole thing. Whereas the song is just... It's run like a business. It's all about money. And you get that impression. Real quick. Well, that's... What is this? Ten minutes long? I, mean, I don't want to make a long video on that. Maybe if this... If you like this... Let me know. If you don't, I won't put a video out like this anymore. And like I'm saying, here I am. Here's the melancholy. If I feel this ain't accepted, I'll back away and just, I keep this stuff to myself. I don't have to share this. But by putting it out, you run the risk of being hurt. A melancholy easily hurt. If he gets hurt, he wants to run away and hide. Keep it to himself. But I'm daring to put it out there. It takes me... <laughs> I have to be brave. I'm not asking you. Is this any good to you? Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. Should just put it out there and then just be like some of the prophets used to do that. Prophets were that way. They could go in there and cry and weep and plead with the people. But they knew enough to get their message out there and then get out of Dodge. Because they would be rejected and hurt. Jeremiah got that way. Read the book of Jeremiah. He got to the point. He got tired of being hurt. So he complains to God about it. What's God say? Well, if you don't want to do this, I'll get somebody else. And he said, oh, well, well, no, I, I want to do this. You need, I need your protection. I need your help. God protect them. Those that did him dirt, that rejected the message that God had given to them through him, they he lived. They died. I mean, that was God's messenger. Don't touch God's anointed. I mean, sometimes they're, they're very strong melancholies. But they can be very strong cholerics when God wants to speak the words of warning and judgment upon them. But they have enough sense to get out of Dodge or they hung around too long they got killed. A lot of pops got killed. They learned to get out of Dodge. So that's what I'm saying. I give out the message. Sometimes some of mine are very melancholy. Other times uh, I try to give out things that can be strong, cleric teachings and commands and orders, warnings. And then other times I just, you know, try to put out, maybe I should put a, a video about a laughing dog or something, you know. There's enough of that on the web. If you want to have this go in there and look at crazy things and you want to be entertained or hear jokes, they're there. There are people there to do that for you. That's what you want out of the web. Just go in there and socialize. You know, I try to bring a balance out. I don't always achieve that. And like I said, I don't mean to be gloom and doom. You know, so sorrowful. I hope to win people. For whatever means, by whatever way, to win people. It's a phone call, good timing, so I'll end on that. God bless.